Welcome to the My Amazon Guy podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Pope, and I'm joined today with a special guest, Shaheen Cheyenne. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, Stephen, thanks for having me on. So you have uh, a book that's coming out in August by the name Billion. Uh, you have your own podcast. You're a successful Amazon seller and pretty much a, a well-known uh, business entrepreneur. So super excited to talk to you today. Um, I guess I guess the question is, is where do we start? There's so many juicy morsels that I'm expecting to pull from you today. So <laughs> why don't we go back a little ways? So when you were 15, you started hustling and selling drugs. But what I don't know is what kind. So tell me. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So yeah, not exactly drugs. So when I was 15, I left home and I had no idea what I was going to do or where I was going to go, but I just knew that I need to go figure something out. So I was hanging around the rave scene, the electronic music scene at the time. Now we're talking 1990s. So we're talking pre-internet or, you know, pre-cell phones, pre all that stuff. And I was hanging around the rave scene and I noticed something at these clubs because I would go to the clubs because I didn't really have anywhere to go. I would sleep in abandoned buildings or on the beach or wherever I could lay my head, you know, real like Wait, rags to riches, but this so was were, the real- Were you rest. homeless then or? Uh, you know, kind of home free when you're 15, okay. when you're 15 and you're on your own, you know, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon because it's all about your mindset. And for me, it was really about mindset. Like I was just like, you know what, dude, like I am free. I don't have to go to school. I don't have to listen to teachers. I don't have to listen to parents. This is epic. So for me, I wasn't, you know, uh, I wasn't like down and out, but I was just, you know, I didn't have any money and, you know, I just made do with whatever I had. Um, so it was a different kind of, kind of thing, but I was hanging around the rave scene. I got involved in electronic music culture and I was, you know, sleeping behind the speakers because those parties would start in those days at, you know, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock midnight. They would just get going and they would go until the morning time. So I could get into the clubs and I would do that. And after a while, I began to notice that the people throwing the clubs were always broke. The promoters never had money. And I was like, mm. okay, well, who's, who's making the money doing this stuff? Maybe it's the DJs. So I went outside and every time I went outside, the DJs were there with their hands out and somebody had forgotten to pay them. So the DJs weren't getting paid either. I was like, it must be the person that owns the building. Nah. Most of those buildings were break-ins or, you know, what they would do is they would kind of negotiate with a late night janitor and get into the building. So the business, you know, the building owners didn't have access to any of the capital from these things. So, but somebody was making money. Who do you, who do you think was making money at these events? I, I'm going to have to say it's going to, going to turn to a product of some kind. <laughs> the guy's well, the product. Your buddies, the drug dealers. Now, I realized at a very early age that I would be very bad at crime. I started looking at like, I, I watched all those uh, scared, there was this like series of movies or, or videos, films that was filmed in the 80s that was like, you know, prison films to like scare kids about crime. It really scared <laughs> me. I was like, I am going to be terrible at crime. I cannot do crime. Crime will not be a thing that I do. So drugs being illegal, I was like, well, that's out of it. But I was like, hey, wait a second. What if there was a way where I could invent a legal drug, one that had no side effects, nobody got hurt from it, it was totally legal using herbal ingredients, and I was crazy enough to not know that I couldn't do it. So <laughs> I did it. What's this and, thing called the FDA, right? <laughs> yeah, well, supplements were unregulated. They supplements are still unregulated. They regulate uh, ingredients and they regulate the manufacturing plants where supplements are made. But in general, no one's there to tell you how much of something you can put in a supplement. Nobody tests a supplement for safety. They might test specific ingredients and they're things that are what's called grass, generally recognized as safe. And those can, can be put into any ingredient. But any supplement you buy out there, anybody could basically put anything into it. So are so, you a chemist or just an enterpriser? I, I'm an entrepreneur, um, you know, but I, but I, I'm, I'm so pretty- You didn't know how to make this. You just saw the need and you're like, I'm gonna fill the need. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, yeah. this is something that needs to be in the market and you know, let's, let's do it. So, you know, I went to Chinatown, I talked to Chinese herbalists. I, 
you know, called people. I, I went to the library, I pulled out books and I just started calling the authors. And back in those days, people picked up their phones and authors would talk to me. I talked to Andrew Whale, one of the greatest uh, herbalists and, you know, multimillionaire, uh, legendary doctor. He wrote all the textbooks and he took my call and he gave me references and he showed me how to do stuff. And, and people That's did awesome. that all, all the time. Yeah. And I didn't have any money, but I didn't care. So I got people to front me ingredients. I got people to front me, you know, money. And I made it. And what I did was I went into the club and, you know, I, 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 you know, reached deep down in my pants, grabbed my nuts. And I was like, yep, let's do this. And I, I walked into the club and I approached the first drug dealer that I saw. And now something interesting was happening at this time. The supply of MDMA, methyl dioxymethamphetamine, ecstasy, molly had dried out. It was a fairly complicated drug to synthesize and the Americans hadn't quite gotten it perfect. So most of it was coming from Europe and the DEA had cracked down. So the supply of real drugs had shut down. I was at the right place at the right time. And I had come with this alternative. Now, this was just one guy at a club. He was a drug dealer. He was out of goods. He hadn't had it in weeks and people were chomping at the bit and he for, didn't for know anything. What to do. He needed a supply. He needed a supply. That's right. And I went to him and this was my, my brilliant idea about distribution was, Hey buddy, what if you could sell this stuff? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's bullshit, you know, whatever. And I said, look, try it. I'll front you the bag, right? I, of course I didn't have enough money to front him anything, but I had a bag full of pills and I said, here goes everything. And I gave him the bag and I just sat and I watched as you know, he started distributing it, uh, you know, around the club, one person, two people, 10 people, people were partying, people were pointing at me, pointing at him. He was the most popular guy at the party. And he came back. He's like, dude, do you have more? And I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> now I gotta get more. And it grew. So to make, to make a long story short, Steven, it went from one drug dealer to 10 to a thousand to 10,000 all over the world to retail distribution. We were in urban outfitters. We had a deal with warehouse. We had a deal with tower records. I don't know if you remember wow. tower records back in the day. We, we saved tower records because <laughs> they couldn't sell the people stopped buying albums and people were going in there buying our pills, urban outfitters, uh, seven 11, all these stores. And one morning I walk into my office. I'm, you know, somewhere in my teens or early twenties or something like that. And the news breaks, I'm going to be on the news again. You know, I've been on the news every day. I've done all the big talk shows every, you know, we're on our second Newsweek cover, you know, uh, details magazine cover with, uh, Chris Cornell, you know, the, the, uh, singer of Soundgarden. And, you know, I get the news breaks that we made a billion dollars. We broke the billion dollar mark pre internet, That's pre social media, pre cell phones. How did that, how did that make you feel? I know it's a typical reporter question, but how did it make you feel to hit that? Yeah. Thing? And so that was my, oh shit moment. Not that we'd made a billion dollars because I didn't know what a fucking billion dollars was. <laughs> Who does? So I'm, I'm reaching out, I'm pulling out encyclopedias. I'm like screaming at my staff. I'm like, dude, somebody fucking tell me what a billion dollars. And someone's like, it's a hundred million. Someone's like, it's a thousand million. I'm like, make up your fucking minds. I'm going to go on the news. And so I was having this panic attack about not knowing how much a billion dollars is. And then someone calmed me down. They're like, dude, no one's going to ask you about that. They want the long hair. I had long hair at the time. They want the long hair kid who's like, you know, on MTV, who's selling all these, you know, all these pills. And they want to talk to you about that. And that was, you know, the big wake up moment for me where like, oh shit, like I better start getting my shit together. And that's kind of what, the stories about the the film and the upcoming book billion how i became king of the thrill pill cult uh which we're going to release sometime in august um and that's going to be you know super interesting because i talk about those days and you know finding distribution and how hard that was like now guys like you and me we, we fucking have it so yeah. easy you jump on Amazon in under 30 days, although it's getting harder. Supplements hardest category right. to sell in on Amazon these days. I know a lot of people are going to going to watch this on the replay, especially supplement sellers. It's going to spread like wildfire on social media and be like, you need to hear this. This is this, this is that big tip. So feel free to pepper in any any supplement Amazon tips today. People are going to eat that up. Yeah, look, I've been in supplements since the early 90s. You know, the herbal ecstasy, which was my supplement at the time that I invented, was one of the largest supplements of all time. And since 
we have done a lot. So fast forward, I invented all the technology for digital vaporization, pioneered, invented digital vaporization, took that company public, um, or I didn't take it public personally, but the company went public, I should say. And so I exited all the, all the, the, the forerunners for digital vaporization and all the stuff you see out there for vapes came through the technology that we developed through that company. And that company is now public. It was one of the first vaporizer companies that, pub that went public. So after that, I decided, hey, let me do some more supplements. And I was really into the whole biohacking, uh, nootropic space. And funny enough, Bradley Cooper, the actor who was in the film Limitless, was at my house before he did <laughs> Limitless. And we were hanging out, talking. And you know, I, I was always talking unreal. about supplements. Unreal. It was, it was, it's, it's unreal. And I thought, hey, let me make a supplement. So we partnered with uh, a manufacturer, a big pharma company. It was, you know, at the time, I think I can say it now, uh, Pfizer. And we developed this incredible nootropic brain supplement. Now, Bezos hadn't opened up a uh, third party just yet. So you could sell books, you could sell DVDs. There was like a limited number of things that you could sell as a third party, but it, it still hadn't been fully open. Seller Central hadn't fully been open. And so, I got the news that, hey, they're going to they're gonna open it up. They did like, uh, it was like a beta to a bunch of us. So they reached out and they were like, hey, you know, we're doing a beta. Do you guys have anything you want to list? I was like, fuck, let oh, me yeah. sell the supplement, right? Yeah. It was a, why not? It was, a, it was 120 bucks a month for the supplement. And of course, we, they didn't have subscribe and save back then. And I was like, you know what? Let's, let's put it up. Let's put it up on, uh, on, the, on, on this platform and see what happens. And we listed it. It was 120 bucks for a supplement, a new tropic the first brain pill on Amazon. Now it's a crazy industry and I can talk about that too. And I didn't think anything of it. I woke up the next day after the listing was up to hundreds, maybe thousands of sales for this stuff. And I was like, holy shit, there's something <laughs> to this. Something behind thing. this e-commerce thing called Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it wasn't like today where Amazon's like, fuck you, bring us the eyeballs. <laughs> fuck you, bring us the customers. Right? Fuck you. What are you going to do? What, who are you going to bring to us? Oh, and by the way, we're not going to share those fucking customers with you. Back then it was like, we're running Google ads, Facebook ads, everybody come on in, hey, buy this guy's stuff. And we're like, oh, this is amazing. We're selling product. And they're like, no, this is fucking amazing. We're increasing share value. We're, we're getting customers. And, and back in those days, dude, they would give us the emails. They would give us the phone everything. numbers. I everything. mean, everything. And there was, you know, reviews were easy peasy like you could we we would get a thousand reviews in a month like that it was nothing and so it was like you know somebody so you know gave us that golden goose and we were like holy shit and so we just expanded from there you know from the early days and we launched you know uh the first tea brand that was on amazon the first uh matcha tea brand which were you know one of the the big players in matcha tea now um, you know, we were one of the first to really be a player in the collagen, uh, field on Amazon. Dude, I, and, I, I have so many people sell that now. Jeez Louise. These are big, big categories and you're first to market on them. Wow. Yeah. 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 And you know, and then at some point Amazon was like, yeah, you know what? We don't, we don't really need to, we don't really need, we, we've got enough sellers. We're good. We're good. In, yeah. in fact, we don't want the ones that we have. So we're not going to advertise anymore. Sorry guys. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. And by the way, you need to bring us people. So we're, we're, they adjusted, you know, their algorithm so that the, you know, initially the algorithm was very simple. It was a very clean, very pure, very simplistic, yet naive algorithm. And they adjusted it now to like, hey, if you're bringing us people from social, that's going to be an extra tick on the algo and we'll give you a little bit of extra credit. And if you're advertising, we'll give you a little bit of a push on the algo. And, and now it's gotten even more extreme. And the way that they're, they're managing it really, you know, it, it influences and endorses their long tail business philosophy, but also with a very heavy hand lets you as a seller know that they don't fucking care about you. What, what's important that's, that's is why that. I'm in business, right? Like, uh, yeah, they're a customer centric platform, but the only customer is not the seller. It's always the buyer. And so that's the only customer they care about. Um, now sellers have had a lot of trouble with all kinds of things. Just, just, you know, if we just break it down just the last 365 days, right? Last summer they started pushing people on pesticides and I actually like, uh, you know, your, your ingredients 
sound like they could even maybe have a pesticide in them, right? And so I ended up giving out the free answer key to pesticides online. So if anybody wants the answer key to, to the pesticides test on Amazon, just Google my Amazon guy pesticides. It's like the second hit. And, 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 and I did that because nobody I know ever sold pesticides. It was just stupid. Like, why are you making them take this test? Then um, I guess in the kind of the fall, they started uh, beating, beating their chest about, hey, we're going to need you guys to all have COAs for every single product instead of just the category ungating. Um, and the amount of documentation has just been on the rise. So complexities are way up. What advice would you give people trying to make it in supplements these days? Yeah, so look, supplements are very interesting on Amazon. You know, I teach a course uh, called Amazon Mastery and I teach this to my students all the time. I don't tell them to shy away from supplements and I'll tell you why. So we, when, when, when I teach starting Amazon sellers how to sell on Amazon, there's a couple things. So we, we can start with the foundations and then I'll explain to you my, my point about supplements and how you can, how you can launch supplements. So the, the first thing is you got to realize, and somebody taught me this, a guy named Tom Hopkins, who's a, a famous writer. And he, if you, if you ever want to learn about selling and the dynamics of selling, this guy's an old school dude, like old balls, fucking toupee and like polyester suit. It's fucking legend. This guy, Tom Hopkins, the art of selling, right? yep. The art of selling, right? And I went to one of his seminars and I walked up to him super nervous. I was a kid. I, I was still, dude, I, I was sleeping in an abandoned buildings. I, I fucking was sneaking into these, these personal development seminars. So I had snuck into this thing and I walked up to him and I, you know, I like had borrowed a suit or whatever. And I, I was like, you know, I, I asked him, you know, like what the trick is, right? Well, like, what's the deal? Like he's, he's selling everybody. Right. And he was even back then he was a cheesy polyester toupee dude. <laughs> like he was fucking nailing it every time. And he just looked at me and he said, you know, buddy, behind every sale, there is a human, right? So there's a person. And if you know how to handle that person, the sale will be natural. And this was like his no bullshit. Like this wasn't really in his book. It wasn't like this was just no bullshit him communicating to me in a very real way as a teenager. And I was like, fuck. And so as I grew and expanded, I learned that, you know, ultimately, no matter what books you read, no matter what you do, you're going to be dealing with humans on the other end of things. So you have to be able to manage the human component. So similarly, and what I learned through martial arts is that you have to know your own weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Now, well, how does that relate to people who are selling on Amazon and people who are just starting to sell on Amazon? How make, I teach my students. Make, make those okay. vulnerabilities your advantage, sell into those right. objections. Exactly right. And here's the thing. We work on feedback loops. Amazon has gotten harder and harder. Why? Because they're making it harder and harder to get into these market marketplaces. So if the first product that you choose to launch is one that has huge barriers to entry, right? You've got Russian hackers and Ukrainian hackers and freaking Chinese. It's always you know, the Chinese. It's never the dudes, Russians. Dudes in there, right? You've got all these black hat people in there competing. It's going to make it harder for you to get that feedback. What do I mean by feedback? You put input in and you need to see output out. So this is what I recommend for people who are on Amazon is what you need to do is you need to think about, especially when you're starting off, when you're a pro like you, Steven, it's a different story. But when you're starting off, you need to have something that's going to be an easy win for you, low hanging fruit. And there's a lot of it out there, right? You can use all the tools that we use to discover products. We've got our own proprietary tools. You can use Helium 10 or Jungle Scout or any of this stuff. But the point is you find something that has a vulnerability that's easy to exploit and you exploit it. So maybe it's, they've got shitty reviews. Maybe their copy is bad. Maybe their images are terrible, whatever it is. Maybe you can make a better product. Maybe you can bring more value. There's lots or, of different hacks. Or be but, first to market like you did. Sure, be first to market with something. That's a little bit harder. That's usually it, it not- It is harder now because it's such a commodity market at this point, but yeah. it's still possible. Yeah, a lot of people that's come up all the time. Yeah, they come yeah. up to me all the time. They're like, hey, is this product going to succeed on Amazon? I'm like, I take a look at it. I'm like, I don't know, man. I have no idea. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So the idea is when you're starting off, 
don't go for a supplement. Why? Because you're going to be competing with a lot of people. I mean, try to get in the nootropic space. I've got, you know, I don't know, a few dozen nootropic products that we sell. We've got nootropics for, for our customers. That is a market run by black hat people. So these people, if you, if you see lots of listings that have like 40 reviews, 60 reviews, and they're ranked number three in an ultra aggressive category, those people are running bots. They've got somebody in China working somewhere in Amazon or who've hacked the system somehow. They're doing fake buys. They're doing all kinds of hacks to manage to get to that ranking point. That and, is not a good the, place. And they're the 15 year old version of you having to put food on the table and they're going to do whatever it takes to succeed. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we all know the Chinese, they got burner accounts. So there's, you can buy in bulk, you know, you go on any of the black hat sites or the dark web, you can buy in bulk hundreds, if not thousands of Amazon accounts for relatively low. So they'll run, you know, Hey, they're going to run a brain supplement. They're going to run whatever's high Garcinia Gambogia or whatever those, you know, diet, the, all the Dr. Oz yeah. diet shit. They're going to fucking run that hard and fast. On these on these accounts where they've got ranking for it, they'll make fifty grand, sixty grand. The account will get cut for fake reviews. They got another one ready to go. With. Yep, right. They're and they're just continuing that thing. You don't want to compete with that. Now, what? How do you how do you do it then? So we teach this also in Amazon Mastery. Is riches are in the niches, and you'll hear me say this a lot. I, I like and, that one. Don't don't say that one ten times fast though. <laughs> yeah, right. And the fact is that there are a lot of unexploited niches in there and you just need to know archery okay let's go into archery well everybody's selling arrows but what about the tips what about the little blinking lights at the bottom of the arrows like these are things that as you dive deep into the fishing right so okay so fishing uh, yeah okay there's a million companies selling poles but what about the specific type of lure car parts you know the more niche you break down there's going to be something that people may be buying on a different platform because they can't find it on Amazon or people yeah, are right. buying on Amazon and paying way too much and you can come in and exploit the weaknesses in that niche. I mean, every day we do discovery calls with my clients and with my students and we're finding like, I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know that, you this know, there was 80,000, this guy, dude's making $80,000 a month selling carburetors for 86 Ford Focuses. Like, who knew? Ooh, and there's yeah. a company, you know, making them in China. Like, there you go. It's a niche. It's not sexy. All the sexy stuff is done. Like, if you think you're going to fucking first product out, sell collagen and make money, you, you better fucking think again, right? If you think you're going to sell those fake SD chips because they're light and they're thin and you figured out the fucking algorithm, think again. And here's the other part of it. Here's the thing, and I've, I've launched hundreds of companies, people that have started from nothing, stay-at-home moms, you know, uh, dads that have lost their jobs, started them from zero and turned them into six, seven, couple eight-figure uh, products. Now, what's the difference between the people that succeed and the people that fail? Okay. People that are say hashtag passive income and then they don't do the work? <laughs> close, close. It's, it's a little different than that. And I'll tell you from, from my watching people and coaching people every single day on how these things get done is the mindset that people have is what makes the difference. So a lot of people think of it like uh, a Vegas casino and they think it's a roulette table. And they're like, just like you were telling me uh, earlier, how, you know, people bring you products and they're like, Hey, will this work? And you're like, fucked if I know, like, what do you mean? Like maybe yes, no, right? It doesn't, the product doesn't matter. Watch Shark Tank. When you watch Shark Tank, look at what the, what they always say in every episode. They're like, you know what? I don't really know about your business or your, or right, your product, I'm about you. I'm but I'm, about you. it's about you. Right? What, why do they believe it? Why do these millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires saying that? Because it's about the mindset. If you go at it with a roulette table concept where like, hey man, I'm gonna do college in here. Let me roll these fucking dice and it doesn't work. You're devastated. You've blown all your money and you're now like, fuck man, this doesn't work. And you, the feedback loop isn't closed and you know, your job's paying a little bit of money and your boss is gonna give you a raise an extra five bucks an hour. You know, that doesn't look too bad, right? He gives you a couple weeks off. You know, you can go get drunk in Cabo or something. Like people do that and then they quit. Something else comes up, noise. But the people who are like, you know what? I'm gonna put this fucking nail in this board no matter what it takes. The hammer didn't work. I'm gonna get a sledge. I'm gonna use my hand. I'm gonna use my hand. I'm gonna use my, <laughs> I'm gonna use my, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, that nail's going through. 
right? And then that's how it it's works with dry. Amazon, right? You launch a product. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. More likely than not, it will teach you what you need to do to get it right. Got to so pay your you tax. Revise. Amazon Got taxes. Tax. Amazon taxes. Then you revise it. Then you do it. Oh, maybe I need better social proof. Great. You need better reviews. Go, go for that. Right. Oh, okay. Well, my, my product isn't descriptive enough, right? It's not, uh, you know, people don't understand how to use it. Okay, great. Adjust the, adjust the videos. I can't tell you how many products fail to be demonstrable. Not only that, how many products fail to show you what's in the fucking package. I've had <laughs> students make six figures, scale. Yep. six figures selling everything exactly identical to everybody else selling it only difference is they show you that theirs comes with the power adapter <sighs> mind blown we right? did a, we did an a b test on a main photo where we showed the cord that came with the item and it won the pick food test 80 to 20 because people just want to have that context all right we got a great question coming in from Radoff off linkedin here how can we find gaps in niches research in all things what would you say to raid so ray you find gaps in niches i think what you're talking about is probably vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities are discovered using a number of algorithms. So every master seller, like uh, I'm sure like, um, you know, our host and myself, we use our own specific algorithms, but it's really simple, right? So this is what I would recommend to you. Follow your gut, look at a listing. If something looks wrong, even I, you know, I come from a design background and years of design packaging, all that kind of stuff. But if something just kind of looks shitty, you don't have to have a fucking design background to tell. You just look at it and you go, there's something not right. wrong here, man, right? Something's, it's, you know, something smells like fish. Like this does not fucking look right. And you can do better. And so the first step is to just follow your gut. You look at the listing, you go, maybe something's off here. Right? And then you go through the basics. There's a checklist, right? It's like jumping out of a plane, you know? You got you to gotta have your checklist, right? You know, is the strap thing, is the parachute here? You have my backup, right? You make your image, you sure your images are good, right? You make sure you- I'm the sort of guy that likes to jump out of the plane before I check all these things, though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that goes for you. You know, we- got to gotta build a plane while I'm flying it. But yeah. but but yeah, this is a great checklist. So if you don't have your video shot for your listing and you're wondering why your sales are rough, but everybody's spending thousands on video ads, kind of missing the boat right now, guys. Video ads just came out for product targeting on product detail pages. If you don't run video ads right now, you got to jump on it. Yeah, right. and it's not it's not that hard to shoot shit. Really, isn't all. Here's, here's a video right phone. here. Here's yeah. a phone. Every single phone that's out right now takes spectacular, like studio grade fucking film. You need a $30 better than what people had five years ago, like on you know professional grade. You know, yeah. you need a little editing. You know, maybe you need some music or some audio, or you know, obviously not everybody is as vernacular talented as you are to go on camera and talk about the product. But but just be real. You know, just talk about it. Showcase the product. Yeah, what if you guys want to. Yeah, yeah. If you guys want an example, check out the videos on Matcha DNA. Uh, Matcha DNA. Uh, you can look it up on Amazon. We've got lots of videos up on that listing, and it's you know, I know a lot of sellers are secretive about the listings that they have and the products that they have. I don't give a fuck. We've been selling it for so long. I'll tell you guys every <laughs> single one of our SKUs and invite you guys to come compete with us. You know, because it's it doesn't really matter. I think it, is it. I always find that odd that they're like garlic peel, yeah, like, go for a garlic yeah. press or go for some shit like Apple that. Apple slicer. Like, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at this. Is this one of them? Did I find the right one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll pull the pull the audio down a little bit. Make it full screen. So, you know, obviously, banana for scale right there. Attractive talent talking about the product. You had a little attention getting device in the first five seconds to get the attention. Check out what it can make. There's your lifestyle. A little few reviews. So it just talks about all the features. And it's delicious. This has been an absolute life saver, and I mean that literally. So we have a lot of things that check all the boxes. And the other thing, too, I know who your target demographic is. Yeah. Right? Like a lot of people are like, let me build this big tent. I'm gonna I'm gonna advertise this toothbrush to anybody with teeth. No, this is how you do it, guys. Right here, right here. This was perfect. I know that that was built 
for that woman demographic at a certain age, a certain look, we know exactly who's going to buy this product. So yeah. well done. Yeah, Not we don't fuck to tell too much with these. Yeah, we don't fuck too much with these listings because you know, even though the image sets aren't perfect and the copy isn't perfect, you know, it's just because these sell so many millions of dollars a year. This product does. Uh, countless millions of dollars a year and it has you know i mean uh, for for years and years i mean this one's probably generated well over 100 million bucks um over its lifetime we um we and and that's not the main asin by the way either yeah this is the um, random first one i could find right yeah yeah, yeah. so 32 got, on the bsr right now yeah 5000 reviews pretty successful i'd say maybe just a tad yeah Love and then it. the other thing that we do that most people probably won't admit to is that we launch products on all um, all levels of this category. So we launch our own brands to compete with our brands. So we have multiple competing brands that compete with our own brands at the same time. We do private label for other companies who want to buy matcha. So I mean, we produce for a lot of the other Amazon sellers. Um, we decided a while ago that we would just call everybody on, you know, in the matcha game and offer up supply. And you know we might make fifty cents or a buck a unit, but we make money no matter who you buy when people are buying on there. So that's that's awesome. And then we've got you know multiple competing brands. So it's definitely definitely putting your stock into a category. It's like a hedge almost. Uh, it's kind of like what the hedge funds would do. They'd bet on both sides and win no matter what. Smart. Yeah. All right. All right. So so shifting this up a little bit. Um, you you obviously come across as somebody who is anti corporate culture. Uh, and and very pro entrepreneur, right? Hmm. So you know this resonates a lot because uh, everybody in the last year and a half has gone through a lot of changes, right? And and they're like, I don't even want to. I just want to keep remote commuting uh, instead of going back to the office. So so what's your take on this? Do you think corporate culture is is dead and it's every entrepreneur for themselves, or what do you think? Well. You know, I think it's I think it's interesting. I think, you know, everybody knows now, especially through COVID, that the way of doing things that we have been doing things is done and that we do work pretty well from home. That's you something that, that we've genie learned. back in the bottle, no doubt. Yeah, that genie's not going back in the bottle. Now, with that said, I still think that there's some merit to having an office and having people there and teamwork and people really, I mean, you know, you've got four kids, you know, you, you gotta, there's gotta be a separation of church and state. So there is value, you know, we work probably isn't going out of business this year, at least, you know, and people, people are going to be looking for kind of a return to the norm. Now, with that said, this is the amazing thing. You know, it's like I was a teenage kid whose company had made, you know, over a billion bucks. And, you know, we were making hundreds of millions of dollars a year after that. And I just remember, you know, I would hang out with, you know, big executives of big companies and billionaires and multimillionaires and traveling on yachts and all this shit. What, was and, it fun? Oh, it was a blast. Yeah. I mean, we talk about it in the book. You know, there's there's some pretty interesting parts. There was a a time where I was flown out on a private jet to Tokyo and I didn't know who I was meeting and I ended up meeting with the Yakuza, believe it or not. The <laughs> Japanese market, who, just love your pinky. <laughs> who want to take over the company. I do, but a lot of, a lot of those guys didn't. Um, so, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was really interesting times. It was a crazy ride. You know I mean? I was, I was going to parties, you know, I mean, we were, we were hanging out. We went to freaking uh, George Michael's birthday party with uh, Michael Stipe of REM and, you know, Elton John was there and like, we went with the whole band of U2. So it was like U2 and Michael Stipes and, you know, we, we were hanging out with rock stars and Academy Award winning celebrities and like all these people. And then I would meet people from corporate America and I would be like, fuck man, you're making that much money. And I'd, I'd see how much money they were making. And I'm like, fuck, you have to work for that. Like you got to get up at like, you know, 6 AM, like, you know, kiss the wife, have the coffee and fucking like go off into an office and you know, you're indebted to someone else. And sure you're making an executive salary, but like, Is dude, I can like, I can fly over to Paris tomorrow and just like hang out. Like I've got the marker of freedom. And this is one of the points. I know this is a show about Amazon. Is that? But, but it's know, all, it's also about business and entrepreneurs. And I'm a big fan of Gary Vee and your style. So please, please do go there. Yeah, great. So you know, I mean, that's that's the point. 
that there, there is a risk inherent to entrepreneurship. And there's a guy, Nassim Taleb, he wrote a book called Black Swan. It's an amazing book. I and he, love this book. It's on my shelf behind me. Seriously. Right here. Boom. Black Swan. Boom. <laughs> oh, yeah. And his follow-up to that was uh, Anti-Fragile, which is also really good. I'm sure you've read that too. I, I don't mean to steal your thunder, but this is literally my favorite book. <laughs> there you go. There so, you go. Yeah. He's, this, this guy he, criticizes the bell curve better than anybody I know. That's right. That's right. And he, he, he makes the he makes the point in the book that you know your amount of success in or if you look at people in life, the amount of success that they have is relative in general to the amount of risk that they take, right? So the guy working at the, you know, at the checkout counter has a very low amount of risk, right? He's got to wake up, he shows up to the checkout counter, he does, you know, checks people out and he gets his paycheck. There's no risk there, right? Maybe he'll lose his job, very low risk, right? Low stakes job. The, the guy that owns the, the business, he might be making millions because he can show up tomorrow and it could be COVID and the doors could be closed. He could show up tomorrow. So that level of risk, you've got to make a decision now in this moment that you're watching this, there's a reason why you're watching this, is if that risk is appropriate for you and if you're willing to lay it all on the line. Now, here comes the beautiful part about this. You don't have to make stupid decisions. So it's not, again, it's not that mindset of a roulette table where you're waiting for you know your, your numbers to come and maybe they do, maybe they don't. You can make intelligent decisions. And especially on Amazon, you can do your research, you can move slowly. You can make slow decisions as you move forward and intelligent decisions. You can seek counsel, you can join masterminds, you can take courses and educate yourself from people who've done it so that when you do it, you do it intelligently. But that level of freedom that is now afforded to us through platforms like Amazon, FBA, and even Etsy, you know, I've got a lot of students now who are taking what we're teaching on Amazon and applying it to Etsy and came crushing on Etsy because that's a much more blue ocean uh, environment right now. So for any of you guys who are sellers on Amazon, absolutely look at Etsy. And if you think, fuck, I don't have, I'm not like, you know, home crocheting, you know, uh, uh, thong panties for my, uh, for my granny, you know, rethink it. Cause the number one complaint that my students get on Etsy is, oh my God, it's made in China. I thought you were small, uh, you know, at home yep. shop. And I'm like, dude, 99.9 .9 fucking percent of everything that comes out of Etsy is made in China. And anybody that tells you differently is bullshitting you. So get with it. Now, we talk a lot about the language of Amazon and we use Robert Caldini's principles of influence to sell anytime we sell anything. Social proof, authority, likability, reciprocity, scarcity. These elements are essential, right? They're critical for when you sell. And if you can apply those to any kind of an algorithm uh, where you're going to sell and you're going to sell on Amazon, you're going to sell on Etsy, Walmart, eBay, any of these platforms, when you're using these elements of influence, you can already come in ahead of the competition. So we got a couple of good comments here. So Raid says, entrepreneurs have freedom of time, money, and place. I think we've impacted that quite well. Uh, this comment is interesting. So Alex, I'm about to join college this year. Talks like these definitely make me reconsider ever my second of life. Uh, so what advice would you give somebody? Is there still hope for like rags to riches here? What, what should they do? Yeah, Alex, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's really important that, you decide what you want to do. And I, I look, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got, I've got a kid. I'm a firm believer in following your heart. And if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a rocket scientist or something in academia, and those are noble pursuits. And some people will be geared towards that. And some people initially will be put in those categories or would like to go to those categories. Then I think, you know, if, if you thrive in a formal education setting, then yeah, by all means, I can do it, right? You're going to have to figure out how to get the money. You're going to have to live on ramen unless your parents are rich and then you're good to go. <laughs> but you know, you can, you can, you can do that. I think the confusion comes when we confuse formal education with making money. The two are independent of each other. It has nothing to do with each other. So if my, if I'll, I'll put it to you, if my boy asked me, hey dad, should I go to college or not? 
I would say, what do you want to do? I would have to ask him what he wants to do. If he wanted to just make money, then maybe it wouldn't be the right thing for him. So I think, Shaheen, you probably have uh, an autonomy drive setting that is probably 99th percentile. So how driven does somebody need to be to follow um, a lesser extreme version of your path, may we say, but still make it as an entrepreneur? Is there a percentage of drive that you think you can identify scientifically? No, you need to wake the fuck up. Like <laughs> you're either going to do it or you're not. This is the this is the fucking problem. And this is the problem with this current generation that we have. All these people watching these Give me, gurus, give me, give me. Right? Yeah. And I know all these gurus, you know, I I've, I've seen them all. I've seen them all come up, right? Look at my fucking Lamborghinis and look at the, the you see on the Insta, you see those babes in that jacuzzi? Look, yeah, they're all with me in the fucking let's go shoot guns in the desert with bikini like it's all fucking bullshit, but people it's buy into it's it. It's fake as crap. I, I, I drive a 2008 Mazda 3. I don't <laughs> yeah. need a Lamborghini. I don't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like what, I sit but, in my house. But why? Why? So here's the thing. Why are those things so popular? It works. It works. That kind of marketing works. It's not only aspirational, but people are buying the dream because it gives them an excuse from doing the fucking work and making I the decision. That. Right? Yeah, if I live if vicariously I, through you, yeah. If I go out and I buy some dude's social media marketing course, I'm not going to mention any names because I don't believe in putting other people down. But you know, if I go buy some dude on Insta or on TikTok social media program, right, for what, however much money, and I bought it, right? What am I buying? Am I buying like the bullshit the guy's teaching that I could probably get for free on fucking YouTube? No. What I'm getting, I'm buying that fucking lottery ticket. Right? Nobody wins the fucking lottery. You lose the lottery, right? It's a losing proposition. You are betting against yourself losing every time you buy that fucking ticket. But you now have bought the ticket. You've taken that action. Instead, take that fucking energy and put it into hard work because none of the shit's easy. The stuff Steven does, the stuff that we do, right? None of it's fucking easy and none of it is like written out for you so that, you know, you, you spend some money, you go out there, you roll the dice and then you're the bikini girls are sitting there on the yacht with the Lambo. It's just not, it doesn't fucking work that way. Doesn't you got to go out there and bust your ass even in the ecstasy days. Dude, I ate tortilla, you know, because you could buy 200 of them for in those days, $2. And yep. I, I kept, and they wouldn't go bad and relish from hot dog stands. I ate that shit. That was what I fucking ate because I was too busy thinking about how I was going to make money. I fucking hustled. And then one day I woke up and it's like, you've made a billion dollars. I'm like, oh, and everybody's looking at me and going, look at that little fucking, you know, teenage kid who, you know, long hair, you know, little prick who made, you know, he's made a billion dollars. He got lucky. I'm like, no, I fucking worked hard. You worked it. hard. Yeah. You Dude. I, and I'll tell you, I've got friends that are famous actors, right? Academy Award winning actors, famous actors, you know, uh, top of their field or whatever. And people look at them and go, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, they, you know, that, that guy just, just made it. I'm like, no. That person has paid their Work. fucking dues. Yep. You only see the most recent success. You only see your point of contact with that person. What you fail to see is all the stuff they had to do to get to where they are. All the stuff that they had to do to make sure that the stars align in their favor. And then people say, you're lucky. That's <laughs> what luck is. Yeah, I think you, I, I literally can't add anything better to that to indict that further. You've been a fantastic interview. Um, you've got a book coming out in August. I think it might have the word billion in it. Yeah. So the book is called Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult. We've got a podcast. It's free on Stitcher, uh, Amazon Music, all anywhere podcasts are found. Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Spotify, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult. We do a weekly show with my co-host, Bart Baggett. Um, author of Lifestyles of the Rich and Happy, awesome dude. And those those shows are really great. We have uh, Chris Voss, the FBI negotiator on, Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari, amazing guests. And it's all about hacking the ecosystems of things like Amazon. And we talk about Amazon suspensions. We talk about how people use black hat tactics to get ahead of the game and like what is going on in the moment there. So that's Hack and Grow Rich. Um, and then, you know, I, I know your audience is probably more advanced, but for anybody who's interested 
And this is part of a, a campaign that I'm doing. So as you guys can tell, and you can read up on me, you know, like I, I try to practice being no bullshit as much as possible. I, and I, I, I literally can't like, find any, any in what you talked about today. So. <laughs> I would have called you out, and, but I couldn't find it. Yeah. Thanks, man. And so, you know, I, I, I think, you know, what, what I'm trying to convey is I don't really need the money for doing this. So my, my Amazon money comes in. I've made my money in the past, well document, just research on the internet, research me on the internet, just look me up any way you guys want to, and you'll see it's, I'm not like a bullshit guy, but I don't, you know, flaunt my wealth. But what I do do, and what I do enjoy is inspiring and impacting other people in their lives. And that's why now I'm doing the whole Amazon thing. So the, the one point that I would like to make is for anybody who's not on Amazon, who'd like to learn how to start an Amazon business from A to Z, I have a one hour crash course. It's everything you need from A to Z to get selling on Amazon. It's normally 200 bucks for anybody who listens to your show, happy to give it for free. They can just reach out. You don't have to spend any money. And my point is that if you want to start an Amazon company, you can do it for very little money from beginning to end, from starting the company to launching your first product. I can show you in the, in the one hour crash course, it's everything you need, where to incorporate, how to get reviews, what the latest tactics are. And that is 100% free for, for your audience. If it's okay with you. Absolutely. How can they, how can they get in touch with you to get that? Yeah. So go to FBA sellercourse.com and just fill out the form and reach out to us. And I'm happy to do that. Or you can just email me. My email is darkzess at gmail.com. That's D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. That is my personal direct email. I respond to every single email personally. So if you want to talk to me, if you think I can help you, or if you need coaching, I do respond to everybody. I've got a lot of people reaching out, so it does take some time, but either myself or somebody from my team will reach out to you in time. And if we can help you on your journey and help impact your life. And I think we just lost his internet there for a second. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you right now? I think, I think you're back. We just lost the last part. We we got all the email and the contact points though. Okay. Yeah. So I was just saying that if there's a way I can help people, impact them, and impact your life, coach you, mentor you, and uh, you know, I'm happy to have a free phone call with anybody who wants to reach out. I respond to all emails directly. So if you get back to me, it might take a minute, but me or someone from my team will call and we'll we'll will answer your questions and get you going. So I, I look forward to being of service and helping anybody that I can. So just reach out guys. Perfect. That is the My Amazon Guy podcast. Obviously a great inspirational get your week started podcast today. Uh, incredible amounts of information. Thank you so much for coming on the My Amazon Guy podcast. Yeah, it's been an honor, Stephen. Thank you so much. All right. We'll